Hi, today I'm here with Dr. David W. Miller. He's the new medical director of pediatric integrative health at University Hospital's Connor Integrative Health Network. That is a mouthful. It is a mouthful, but thank you for having me. Uh, yes, and um, also you are a unique guy. You are dual certified in pediatrics and in Chinese medicine. So I was wondering like, how common is that? It's not particularly common. Like uh, uh, there, there's a handful of us who are sort of fully trained in pediatrics, like five or so. Wow. Uh, I think, you know, when we talk about like board certified in pediatrics and uh, board certified in, in Chinese medicine, um, it's a little unusual because it, it was a four year training program that I did in Chinese medicine on top of, of the Western training. And so it's, it's a big commitment for people to have to go back and do the full training. There's a, a larger number of, of doctors who do medical acupuncture, which is also super valuable, but a, a shorter training in a different path. So you would go for your MD and then do acupuncture? People Correct. do that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, we, can you tell us a little bit about what kind of services are available for teenagers, middle school and high schoolers, mm -hmm. um, that are new to the world that we grew up in. Sure, absolutely. You know, I think, I think medicine is progressing in an exciting way. And I think in, in, in some senses, that means it's opening up to other care options that we didn't have. And I think the other thing that's different from when, when I was a kid, at least too, is um, our understanding of the mind-body connection it has gone from being sort of an abstract, a little bit soft science kind of feel to being like, oh, okay, this is how we're wired. This is hard science. And so what can we bring into our medical treatment um, options uh, that really addresses us as a complete, a complete creature, a complete person, you know, and so this, this interest in sort of whole health thinking and whole systems thinking has really started to become again um, much more uh, of a mainstream interest. And, and in doing so, it's opened up to techniques like acupuncture, for example, that um, you know, brings in a whole body of knowledge from a different medical system, but that meshes really well with our own medical system and, and provides a range of treatment options for, um, for people for, you know, to some degree, at least a little bit for virtually any condition, but certainly for pain, for emotional disorders, for anxiety, for mood, acupuncture um, has shown itself to be very useful you know, to the degree that the, the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services just approved acupuncture for low back pain, chronic low back pain wow. in seniors. And so, you know, to get, to get a, a treatment technique like acupuncture into Medicare is a huge endorsement for the scientific, you know, underpinnings of it. Um, and then we, we have services like meditation, for example, in mindfulness meditation and helping to, to train people to take control of their own thoughts and their own emotion and their own thinking. There's uh, massage therapy as well, too, which, again, sort of used to be thought of, I think, more as just a, a feel-good relaxation kind of thing, not that there's anything that we should downplay about the importance of feeling good and relaxing, especially in today's world. Um, but I think, you know, um, medical massage can, can go much uh, farther beyond that to really clear up some significant musculoskeletal pain problems and also, you know, clear up a lot of sort of tangles in the mind-body connection. I think it can be really important for that. So we talked to parents of teenagers okay. and, um, and I want to start with the question, does a parent encourage their middle school or high school kid to come in pre-diagnosis or is it typically that they're showing up, they've already been to a more traditional Western doctor and then they come to you? Well, it depends. It depends kind of what the issues are that someone's working with. Um, many times I will see people who have been to every doctor they could find already, and they're coming to me to see what other options I have to offer them. Um, and then uh, other times I'll have families come in who just say, you know, hey, I think we could be doing better with our eating. I think there's some lifestyle issues going on. My teenager's staying up till three in the morning and getting up at one in the afternoon. And is that okay? And things like that, where, where we can have sort of a nuts and bolts like, like what's good healthy living kind of discussion and hopefully, you know, avoid getting sick in the first place because that's always the goal. Okay, so let's talk about some of the, the more common things we're seeing among teenagers right now. So mm -hmm. middle school and high school anxiety. We know mm -hmm. even before COVID, we knew that was a huge problem, but it's certainly elevated right now. Yeah. What, are the, what are some of the things that you can do? Absolutely. I mean, I think one of the important things too, and, and one of the points of integrative medicine is its individual nature, you know, and it's, it's focus on that. So, so they can bring the kids in, you know, we can sort of, you know, figure out kind of 
um, the nature of the problem that's happening, um, you know, with the child, which could be, you know, something severe and diagnosable, or it could be situational and just they need some relief, you know, and I think part of the the challenge is, is finding out what works best for each person. And so at Connor, the way we've, we've structured things is people can come to one of our integrative medicine providers like myself. I can do a thorough history and intake and, and learn you know, what's going on with somebody, get to know them a little bit, and then help them connect with the services that might be most optimal for them. And I think, you know, teenagers are in a funny stage of life where, where they feel like they have a lot of knowledge of the world, right? But they kind of don't, you know, at the same time. And so they'll often come in with very strong feelings about the scientific basis of acupuncture that are not grounded in, in anything scientific, you know? And so having some conversations with them about that may open their minds to that too. Other kids come in and they're, you know, they're super uh, open to exploration. You know, I had a, a 12, 13 year old boy in um, not long ago who I think mom didn't think he would ever do acupuncture and he hopped on the table and did a full on treatment the first time and handled it like a champ and was like, oh, I feel kind of relaxed and nice right now. And, and so actually, you know, it gave him a chance to try something new and it turned out to be a really good fit for him. And so part of that is that we try to figure out what works best for each kid and, and help them connect with a provider that they also feel comfortable with. So this might be a ridiculous question, but when, like if someone now comes in with, I've said anxiety, now the next mm -hmm. person is sleep. Are sure. you looking at different treatments for different diagnoses or is it like you try all of them and something might work for somebody? Well, I think, you know, you, you try to make a staged effort to, to make a good choice of where to start. You know, um, there, there are um, many conditions that present differently, but Chinese medicine might see as the same underneath. And then there are other conditions that in Western medicine might present as a single diagnosis that say Chinese medicine, for example, would see as 10 different diagnoses. And so, you know, it, it, it takes um, looking at the person with a little bit of a different set of eyes, but, but the goal is to, to help them find a, a treatment modality and and also habits that will address their issues as quickly as possible you know and so there's certain commonalities to thing like for sleep um there are certain things that everybody should be doing good sleep hygiene kinds of things uh as they say um but then other people might need some extra stuff on top of that so sleep would be a perfect example where that's not a diagnosis right right sleep disturbance could be 20 different things going on Right. And you're, are you going to, if, if my teenager comes in to see you, are you going to try to dig deep to figure out the cause of that? Absolutely. As, as deep as they are comfortable going, you know, I think, I think with teenagers too, they're naturally, most of them a little bit more private. And so to some degree, you sometimes have to tease out their, their uh, interests and willingness um, a little bit in a nonverbal way sometimes too. Some kids come in and they're very articulate and they know just what they are open for and not. Um, but yes, otherwise I really wanna try to get to know them as a person and find out, you know, also what are their priorities? You know, I can try to fix their sleep all day long, but if they don't think their sleep is a problem, you know, you're just not gonna change anything for the most part. But I, I found, especially with teenagers too, even if they don't apply the information that you give them right then and there, they're listening to you. You know, they're evaluating you, they're thinking about what you're saying, and they may take that knowledge and they may apply it a few years later and go, oh, hey, that was really helpful. And how about pain? Is that something that, you know, a, a kid has chronic pain either from a sports injury, maybe an accident, and, and they've yeah. gone to everybody and nobody can do anything for them. Are you a place to show up? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I think pain is one of the areas where, you know, a number of the techniques that we use have really shined, you know, acupuncture being way at the top of that list, that there are causes of pain um, that are very hard to treat, you know, with a pill, and, and even other ones that are hard to treat with different types of therapies. And I think that um, there's a number of different reasons that we have pain that, that oftentimes integrative modalities can address, structural issues, um, we say myofascial issues too, are a whole cause of, of loads of different pain syndromes that, that are typically not addressed, you know, in the mainstream clinics currently anyway. Um, so all of those, you know, we have treatment options 
for, for kids as well. Um, you know, other times it's a matter of changing the perception of the pain because pain is not all one thing. You know, there's sort of signal coming up from your, your body, but the volume of that signal can be very different in the mind of the person. And so sometimes you can, you can help someone a lot by teaching them to manage that signal better, you know, and it's sort of like you have the television on and one person thinks it's too loud and one person thinks it's too soft, you know, the TV's just given off signal, but how we interpret that signal can be vastly different from person to person and we can also change the way we approach that signal. And what, what would help someone change that? Usually things like insight training, like helping them understand that they, they first of all, have the option of changing how they respond to that pain signal. You know, I think there's some very, you know, there's some very root, very animal kinds of responses we have to pain because pain is usually a signal that we don't want to move. Something is going to, you know, be damaged if we keep doing what we're doing. There's all these kinds of warning signs that pain gives us. And sometimes we need to listen to those warning signs, but oftentimes in the case of something like, for example, chronic pain, those warning signs are actually not helpful and are counterproductive to the resolution of the pain itself. So someone could be afraid to move, afraid to stretch, afraid to exercise because they're going to hurt themselves more. But, you know, their physicians, their orthopedists, whoever it is, have checked them out and they're like, you're not going to hurt yourself more. So we have to help them overcome sort of the emotional blockages and the, the cognitive blockages that may be keeping them from their own healthiest self. What's the least known condition that you can treat, but we wouldn't know to come to you? I would say uh, one of the top would be myofascial pain dysfunction. And what that is, is, um, you know, our muscles actually don't all function um, as a single unit, meaning like if I, if I make a biceps curl, right, I'm, I'm lifting a weight like this too, my biceps muscle contracts, right? But, but that muscle actually is made up of lots of little fibers and they can actually get dysregulated so that you get pockets of them that are either, that are usually too tight and locked down. And, and what we've known for a long, long time is that those areas, those trigger points can cause tremendous pain and also referred pain syndromes so that there are trigger points, for example, in the neck that will show up as, as headache pain um, very frequently. And, and so people will be like, I have headaches, no one can treat my headaches, why can't I get my headaches better? And the problem is it's in the muscles, you know, that are leading to that headache pain. And so until you treat the muscles, you don't get rid of the headache. And the headache is really just a secondary symptom to this, this myofascial dysfunction. And that can happen almost anywhere in the body where you have a muscle is where it can happen. So there's a million pain syndromes that present as, as that that don't get treated and don't get treated and, and there's ways of treating that. That's the beauty of you, you and, and the four other people that do what you do. <laughs> because I, I might be reluctant to come because I think that I, I need like, more of the medicine that I grew up with, mm -hmm. but I can get both with you. So that's like, right. that's pretty remarkable that we've got that right here in Cleveland. Well, thank you. What services are most popular with teenagers? When they get to know it, acupuncture actually can be something they really enjoy. Um, there's oftentimes a, um, you know, a resistance threshold that, that you have to get over with them because it's new, it's different, it's needles. And, and it's funny because, you know, in our culture, needles are associated with shots, with pain and this kind of thing. And acupuncture is really a very different experience. Not that it can't be strong. It sometimes can hurt a little bit when you get it and do these things. I don't, I don't like telling people you're never going to feel anything because that's not the point, right? But, um, but it's very different than any other medical treatment anybody's ever gotten, you know? And so... Um, and in, in, since teenagers, depending on how old they are, may be more like little kids than adults, or they may be more like adults than little kids, you know, you're helping them expand their ability to try out new things and, and take control of their, their own health care. So acupuncture can be a wonderful one. I think chiropractic is another one that teens don't know much about. And I think our chiropractic team is really strong. Um, we have people who've been practicing for, for just years and years who are just structurally, you know, brilliant at structural analysis and figuring out how to put the body into the right places. We have people specializing in sports care as well, too. So, um, you know, teens who are into sports, you know, I think the more the more we see images in the media, for example, of, um, of really, really well-respected sports figures using these integrative modalities, you know, Michael Phelps coming up with, and a whole bunch of other swimmers and gymnasts coming up with cupping marks on their back, for example. Like cupping is a, it comes out of Chinese medicine, although it's used all over the world, and um, super simple technique, very safe, and yet can relieve uh, pain and improve sports function 
you know, well enough that the Olympians are using it. So, um, you know, so those orthopedic and, and osteopathic and chiropractic kinds of uh, techniques can be really brilliant also. So my takeaway is just just come to see you because you can help us with everything. Well, um, I can help you find a good a good thing to try for everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And how do I reach you if I want to get in touch? And thank you. Yeah, you just give um, Connor a call at 216-285-4070, or you can go on our website, the University Hospitals Connor Integrative Health Network, and uh, our contact information is all on there. You can make an appointment online, and um, you just ask the front desk staff that you'd like to see the, the integrative medicine provider or Dr. Miller, and they will set you up. Dr. David Miller, I'm so glad you're in Cleveland. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Hi, I'm Stephanie Silverman, one of the founders and owners of Your Teen Media. I want to thank our sponsor, University Hospital's Connor Integrative Network. Their professionals are experts with the highest credentials in conventional medicine, integrative health, medical massage, and traditional Chinese medicine.